the parcels to the sharecroppers. Um, sharecropping is no longer here. Oh, he did what? Uh, oh, you want, you want to pop your phone up there. Um, Just like Dad, right? It was very big until uh, the early 1920s. Um, the first one that was sold Have you got that to T-Mobile? Are you T-Mobile? Have you got that to T-Mobile? Uh, that's a T-Mobile phone, that's where it went. Have you won the T-Mobile phone? You did what? Have you, I did the T-Mobile phone. Uh-huh, who did you just see? Um, Carrie. So if you guys like taking trains, you might consider taking Amtrak someday and going someplace. It's I great like experience. The My wife and I went to Chicago in August, and we got on the train in Chicago and took it to to Montana, to Glacier National Park, and uh, it was a 33-hour ride. We had a roomette where we were able to sleep, and we had like five meals in the dining car. It was just wonderful, so certainly a lot more luxurious than this thing. And generally it went a little faster, except when we hit North Dakota, which was still flooded, and they had 10 mile an hour uh, speed restrictions because of the flooding. And we are blowing our whistle because on the north side we are coming to a sharecropper's cabin that has been rebuilt and it is used as a little vacation getaway. However, it still does not have running water or electricity. That's me. Uh -huh. You wish that was you. With no running water and no electricity. You have to pump water outside, you have to go to an outhouse to go to the bathroom. Oh yeah. You had no sink to turn on, you had no television, no internet, no computers, no phones. It was a tough existence. So as we go along, on the north side, you can see the beginnings of a chain link fence momentarily. That is the Fairfield County Airport. It is a general aviation airport. In other words, it is only small planes. There was no scheduled service. You will be able to see the airport through a break in the trees. On the south side, you will see a uh, siding and you will see a wonderful old school building built out of the local granite. That's the Greenbrier School. Uh, it was used as a school from 1940 till 1973. It was then used uh, for various community purposes and eventually was purchased by a private individual who lives there now and has a little factory in the building. Uh, it is quite the structure. He has put in many, many thousands of dollars to rebuild it and make it livable as a home and uh, able to function as a factory. After we pass the Greenbrier School on the south side, we will go into the Greenbrier Cut, which is a hill where the railroad cut through the hill rather than going over the hill.